2011 LG 시네마 3D 업앤다운 매치 8강 행을 확정 지은 8명의 코디의 리거들과 16강 진출에 실패한 16명의 코디에스 리거들 그들은 공석인 16개의 코디에스 자리를 노리며 다시 한번 승부의 꽃을 피운다 코디에스로 승격하느냐 코디에로 강등되느냐 GSL 리거들의 운명을 결정지을 업앤다운 매치 그 피해갈 수 없는 마지막 전투가 지금 시작됩니다 Greetings from Seoul, Korea, and welcome to the GSL Up and Down Matches. I'm Tasis, with me is Artosis, and I gotta say, this week's Up and Down Matches are pretty damn scary. We got some people who are champions of previous seasons. Yeah. Got a lot of new uh, up-and-coming blood, a lot of upsets from Code S. Some of these guys are actually here for some reason. So it's a pretty exciting day. It is indeed, Tasis. Every single group is completely deadly, especially the groups of Huck and Jinro. Yeah. And I'm sure that everyone at home is a little bit scared about that. I know a lot of our foreign viewers, in other words, non-Korean viewers, tuning in right now, obviously probably watching the stream, are going to be uh, really here to watch Liquid Jinro's game. Liquid Jinro from the site TeamLiquid.net. Uh, he's a very popular figure, not just in Korea, uh, I mean outside of Korea, but in Korea as well. Mm. He's a very talented player, competitive StarCraft 1 uh, you know, player, not really pro gamer level in the foreign scene. Now turned into one of the best non-Korean StarCraft players. Actually, even if you include Koreans, um, one he's, of the best. He's got two GSL top fours. Yeah, as well as an international title say. Um, you know, outside Korea. So, look, I think it's going to be a pretty exciting series to see him. Hopefully he gets back into Code S. Uh, he was very disappointed with his loss, as mm. we saw, um, you know, in, in our Code S uh, section of the tournament. Now, uh, our first group here today, it's going to be Keen against Trickster, a.k.a. Soki Su. Um, and then the person they're going to have to face off if they lose, whoever loses that, is going to be San. Let's go ahead and throw up the actual up and down match format to make that a little bit more clear for you, Artos. Let's take it away. All right. Well, basically, we're going to have the guy who came from Code A against the guy who got third in Code S. They're going to play. The loser goes and plays the guy who got fourth in Code S. Loser that goes to Code A. Everyone else, Code S. So, uh, you know, the, the poor person only gets one shot. That's going to be hard, man. For instance, San is PvP. That's his weak matchup. So he's going to be hoping for Keen to uh, lose to Trickster. Yeah. But even so, Keen got top four in Code A, so he's going to be a very scary player to go up against. Now on to today's groups. We're going to have in Group A, MVP Keen against third place in the Code S in his group, TSL Trickster, aka Soki Su. Fourth place, oddly enough, is San. I think one of the best Protosses out there. Very good at Protoss versus Terran. Protoss versus Protoss, probably his weakest. In Group B, we're going to have Xenex Koka from Code A duking it out against Liquid Jinro. Um, you know, one of our only non-Korean players here in the GSL. Yeah. And unfortunately, similar to Group A, the loser of Xenex Koka against Liquid Jinro goes down to face off against OGS Xenio. Xenio is a very match. scary Zerk player. He certainly is. He's a great player. He did not play greatly in this season of Code S. Had kind of an off day, but one off day, man, and that's it. You're in the up and down matches against such beasts as Jinro and Koka. Yeah. It's um, tough, you know. It's why it's so important when you're in Code S to get out of your group. Even if you don't win, obviously you'd like to win, but even if you don't, um, you at least you get another shot. Uh, you know, you make a few mistakes in Code S, and then one or two more mistakes in Code A, or rather in the up and down matches, then you're in Code A. And then you get one best of three, or in Code B. Yeah. And then in Code B, you either keep your cool or you quit and go to the army. Eventually we just get so far down the alphabet, you know, we got to start using, you know, Code T. We gotta use like symbols. Where Tasis just beheads you on the ladder. <laughs> we gotta like put them in the pound sign uh, group or whatever <laughs> it is, you know. Code question mark. Uh, hopefully, don't get that low down there. Of course, Code B. A lot of people don't even know that Code B exists, but it actually does. It's not a joke when our it's like the top sit. 200 on the Korean ladder or something yeah, like that. I believe that's correct. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I don't keep track of it. That anymore. is well, we don't even televise those. No. Uh, we don't have any VODs of those in English. So if you get knocked out of Code A. I mean, you're kind of off the map in Korean esports. You're yeah. struggling to get back in there. You're like those guys trying to get their courage license from StarCraft 1. So 
You really got a lot of pressure on you and Kode. It's actually even more grueling than in StarCraft 1, I think. Every month, like, yeah. eight-plus people would qualify through Courage. Uh, in this, it's like every couple months. Well, I guess it's it's somewhat similar in the amounts. Never mind. I was going to let you just kind of wade through that one and move on, but... No, I mean, it's, it's point being, it's sort of BTs tough. BTs do 45 damage in this game, Tasteless. It's much harder. Let's take a look at our players now. Here is MVP Keen. Quite a record. And when you look at who he's lost to, I mean, there's really no shame losing MVP. No. Mm -hmm. There is none whatsoever, Tasteless. He is an amazing player. Uh, MVP, of course, got second in Code to Bomber. And thus got to pick now, his group. I, I want to clarify just real quick. M there's MVP, the player, who's a, a member of the Team IM. You can see that at the bottom right. MVP Keen, we have a shot of here at the top left. That is MVP being used as a clan ID. Mm -hmm. So essentially, think of it as Keen um, losing to a player named MVP. In fact, we might just want to call him Keen during the cast so this doesn't get confusing because MVP, the player, managed to get through Code as well and is here too. So just don't be confused. Keen songs are running through my head, Tasis. <laughs> I now, feel like it's 2002 all over again. Now we're on to TSL Trickster, a.k.a. Soki Sue. Yeah, and uh, he's done really well in the, the GSL. You know, he's had a lot of deep, deep finishes, and it really looked like he was going to get out of his group until he decided to do maybe one of the deepest, coolest PvP builds ever, rushing to Warp Prism off of four Warp Gates. Flying it into someone's stalkers, I believe it was any pros, and then leaving the game immediately thereafter. Yeah, that was kind of sad. Uh, one thing about this guy, he always seems to want to play ahead of the metagame, mm. not deep within it. He's always trying to kind of outsmart his opponent. And on to another interesting Protoss, San. San, of course, Korean for Mountain here. He is uh, a guy who is very scary. I think most so Protoss versus Terran, then Protoss versus Zerg. Yeah. Then Protoss versus Protoss is a, a bit of a ways off compared to the other matchups that I think is so good. Quite true, quite true. Well, here they are. Our first two players go at it. Keen against Trickster. You know, this group, it's its scary, man. I feel like all three of these players need to be in Code S. But only two can make it in. Will it be these two? We're going to find out. Here's our map lineup. Kravah, Selnaga Caverns, and Metalopolis. Good map lineup. And it's time. So let's get this Terran versus Protoss on. We have Keen against Trickster. It's going to be pretty sick. Head to head here at the GSL. One of these guys is going to be able to grab that Code amulet. And the other one might be at risk of having to grab that Code or Sea Urchin. <laughs> let's see who that's going to be. Head to head, casted by Taste and Artosis. Taste Dosis, the casting archon here at the GSL. Okay, our first game of the Up and Down matches. Thank you again for joining us. Down here in the bottom left, a member of the Team MVP. MVP King. And now to a player. Uh, you and I have both cast a lot of Artosis. Yeah. His name... TSA Trickster. His name in Korean, um, his actual name is Soki Su, but he changed his name in Korean... Sagi say Sagi Su, which uh, is the word for a trickster, essentially. So we generally refer to him as Soki Su. Thank you, LG, G Skill, and Intel for sponsoring this event. Great sponsors all. A lot of different pacing on the up and down matches, Tasteless. Yeah. Almost caught you, but you're good. You're nimble. You're quick. You jumped over the candlestick, and you are fine. And I took Jack's ladder points. <laughs> <laughs> That is so funny. Looks like Trixer is going to be going for a 15 or 16 Nexus. Now, this is a map where you can go up quick expansions and you're safe. Uh, one of the other interesting factors here is that there are these rocks near your main entrance. So, uh, opposing players can do things like charge up Void Rays on those mm -hmm. or tear them down with Marauders. Or you can destroy your own if you want to you know, yeah. help with trafficking units out of your base. They can tag them, put their little spray paint sign on it. Yeah. A little probe hand on it. <laughs> Etches it in with this. Probe gangs in here. Yeah. 
So as you can see, Keen scouting his opponent right away, and luckily scouting in the right position. It is a four-player map. He sees what is going on. He knows it's going to be a fast expand. Mm. And even so, will there really be anything he can do to stop it? I don't think so, man. He's already gone one barracks command center, so he's probably going to want to go ahead and just continue with his idea to expand. Um, and ooh. Talk well, to me, or just he's choosing ah, I see it now too. Turn up two more see, barracks. He gets his own preview screen, so yeah. I had to go. <laughs> ooh, it's quick. Um, well, here's the thing, Trickster. If he can figure this out, if he can smell it, if he can lick his finger and put it in the wind and feel this coming, he can crush it. But he needs to figure that out relatively soon. The two barracks are a little bit late, so this is a risky build by Keen. For instance, yeah. if Trickster goes and makes like two cannons, you can actually go cannons with a fast expansion next. Oh yeah, and you know these are StarCraft 2 yeah. cannons, not StarCraft 1 cannons. Yeah, but these are StarCraft 2 Marines, not StarCraft 1 Marines. Oh well, set our toes. Yeah, um, but still, uh, you know, things like that, if you actually feel an all incoming and you do something like make a few cannons at your choke, you will literally just win the game because yeah. of that, because then the Terran will be so far behind. Do you send SCBs with this rush? Well, we don't really see this rush. Yeah, I think he will. I think he I will. would assume He's, he would too. This is kind of like if he does not kill with this, if he does not brutally maim his opponent with this, he will lose. Oh! I and don't know if that probe got to see the fourth Marine. Oh, here come the SCDs. Yeah. They here line come. up like a bunch of kindergartners, but they're much, much, much more dangerous. Are they in alphabetical order? Let me check. SCV, 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 SCV. Yes. They're yes. in alphabetical order. They're going to be able to have some ice cream after their lunch. They've done well. Maybe They're going to put their time. ducks back in the pond. <laughs> Here they come now. Now three stalkers are very good at migraine against Marines. Yep. Delta the front should take this. And he's going to want to target down as many SCVs as humanly possible while that Zealot's still alive. He's doing a great job so far, today, but it's time to pull some probes. Absolutely cannot let that bunker yeah, he finish needs, up. Uh, he needs to kill that other SCD. And he's doing Whoa. some really sick micro so far. Look at this. He's still got four stalkers alive. And just as long as he kills that SCD, Tasteless. He got it. Yeah, he's going to There's one more good. SCD. Uh, Trickster loops around, and takes out that, that SCD. And I believe that actually may be the end of our Terran player. I mean, unless well, he has some plan B here. He's definitely not giving up, but I, I think you're right, Tasteless. I mean... Trickster has shown some amazing soccer micro, some great decision making. He did not even have Polar Probes. I thought he would for a moment there. But, yeah. Uh, no, I, I was on the same page as you. He, I would have expected Probes to yeah. pulled. I, I think his Zealot micro was just perfect. I would have let the Zealot actually stay in there a bit longer and die. He pulled it back and then had enough for that second go. So uh, he's done a great job. Keen's still putting on a lot of uh, pressure, but Trickster adding some more gateways, getting some more it, stalkers. You know, here's, gonna be fine. here's the issue. Uh, he can actually not defend if he keeps attacking with Marines like this. I would have pulled back once I saw the bunker not complete. Yeah, it, well, you can't really run away from stalkers either, so I have to take that into consideration. That's and very true. During this, Keen has gotten up his command center, so he did an okay job, but he's way behind economically speaking because he did bring those SCVs and did not do enough damage. He's at 22 SCVs against 35 probes, and as long as Trickster actually text correctly here, macros correctly here, he's going to feel basically on top of the world, Tasteless. He might even draw you because he's king of the world. Wow. Wow. I saw him turning into that kid from Rugrats. I'm like, row. <laughs> row. That's what he did. Uh, SCB taken out. Now, here comes a nice little counter attack. He wants to slip a few more Marines in there and try to take out uh, the probes, ideally. He wants to hinder his opponent's economy as much as possible. And Trickster does have some units at home. By the way, he is chrono boosting through his plus one armor, getting a Twilight Counts as well. And look at that, just runs straight up. What are these Marines doing, Taste? They're going right up to the natural. They want to get probes. That's and the whole point of the strategy here. This is actually a huge move. Trickster not noticing that his other stalker's under attack. Wow. Keen has done a great job here. Trickster falling apart a little bit. Well, you know, when it comes to Stalker against Marines, it's really up to the Protoss to micro and win. The Marines just got to catch up. So hitting into a uh, place at once like that could be pretty strong. However, um, I have to say, Trickster's looking pretty, pretty damn yeah, good, man. He, he's getting a Dark Shrine and a Robotics Facility. I got to tell you what, Tasteless. 
Tell me I what. have been playing a lot on the ladder recently using DT drops. You ever use uh, DT drops on the ladder? Not in uh, StarCraft uh, 2. But if I did Artosis, <laughs> I'd be doing it wearing my own cape. I got my Grim Reaper outfit, okay? <laughs> got the touch of death. Yeah. Playing the nerd You got chest. a sight just like, uh, yeah. just like a DT? Yeah, taking their ladder points. <laughs> taking them to nerd hell. <laughs> but I don't want to die, Tasteless. Nerd hell, that's where they have to watch sports all day. <laughs> nerd hero is when they have to play StarCraft 2 on a computer that keeps restarting over and over. They play it on the N64. <laughs> they have to play with an N64 controller. Unfortunately, Tasteless is also in hell playing the, against them using a Game Boy and still beating them. <laughs> <laughs> a Game Boy playing StarCraft, yep. that's hilarious. Not even a Game Boy color. Oh no, I gotcha. The original game, game Boy with the gray screen, where as soon as you move across the screen, everything blurs because yep. that's the only way it works. Yep. All right, so Trickster taking his third base right now. He's up 11 probes still, despite losing some to that nice little uh, marine attack. And it looks like Keen is deciding as Stim finishes, it's time to move out. But, but tasteless. I feel like you're reading from a children's book right now. Please go ahead. I'm like, but then he but came and huffed and puffed. And the DTs blew the Marines and Marauders down. Oh, I don't know where the DTs are. Well, he might warp a minute where the hidden pylon is. He looks like he's going to build a Hellion here. I got to hand it to uh, to Keen. He's really put himself back in this game. The question is, yeah. can this attack up here uh, work? Uh, we got a, two attacks going on at once. We also have a DT in the natural of Keen. He might have to sack the Nexus. Yeah. Now, here's the big question. Can Keen... Um, actually keep this expansion going. He, he did use scans. Very nice. Coming down here with these Zealots and Stalkers. Beautiful force fields there. Nice pickup by Keen. And uh, Trickster has to be careful here. He can't lose these units, but he yeah. does get a DT in there. That force field started to work against him. He, he didn't cancel that in time. Now here's the beauty of DTs is you can force your opponent to never have enough scans to cover everywhere at once. Yes, exactly. And this turret is not yet done. Oh, I think it's about to finish. Oh, oh, oh. Got to get it. Beautiful moves by that DT. And as long as he keeps them split up, doesn't walk near turrets, because near turrets they become free kills. That one's going to be a free kill. Uh, but other than that, Tasteless, I mean, you can guard your expansions. You can keep him in his base. You can harass his main. It's, it's just beautiful play by Trickster to do that. Well, the DT is a, a pretty technical unit because it dies very quickly. But as long as you can avoid uh, what we just saw happen, <laughs> yeah, then they're they're very strong. You actually you have to babysit them a little bit. They're very expensive in StarCraft too, yep. and you cannot let them uh, bunch up. You need to make them use one scan for every DT, and, and you it gotta, really makes them worth it. And you know you got to be very careful, especially with Marauders, because one can cause some shell hits, and the DT is probably not going to get out in front of the scan. Mm -hmm. Nothing can run from a Marauder, tasteless. LOL. No. Well, there's a what? few things that you can choose to do to get, do, get go against these CTs. Save up a bunch of scans. Get a Raven. He's not getting a Raven. Looks like he's saving a few scans up. You know the only problem with getting a Raven is it really messes with the rest of your tech. But I think it's worth it. All right, here we go. Oh, man. Blake, not done. Zealots do not have charge, unless I'm mistaken. Yeah, they actually they do have charge. Oh, now. they do have charge. Yeah. Uh, pardon me. I'm enough. Apart me? <laughs> apart me. I like rip you apart. <laughs> All right, and uh, Keen's drop not going to do a lot. Good warping of those stalkers along with that cannon. It's pretty clear that Keen is a very solid player. Yeah. Oh, he's despite he's that a good rush, game. you know, not as effective. Keen is still in this, staying strong. And T Trickster keeps on pushing around with DTs, but he's losing a lot of them. You know, they they get bunched up, they go near uh, turrets, and really, I feel like you should just. Take a moment, babysit that DT, maybe add an extra gateway or two so that you can keep up on your macro while doing it. But you got to babysit a little bit more than that, I feel. How do you feel, Tasteless? I feel, I, in my heart, I know you're right, Artosis. Thank you. <laughs> I can feel it. Now, <laughs> no, on a serious note, I actually have no idea what the game plan is here from Terran. Now that he's taking this base, he's going to expand closer to... The Protoss, if you take the upper left, because as all Terrans know, as the game goes on, it's harder to try to secure other bases elsewhere and deal yeah. uh, with Protoss harassment. Whoa, that Stalker just took down those rocks himself. Man, um, hard-working Stalker. 
Well, right now we have 150 East 5 for Keen, 138 for Trickster, 45 SCVs to 67 probes. Trickster, probably it's about time for him to take the entire map and make sure that he has all his upgrades going. Switch and tech into Colossus as well. Ghosts are on the way for Keen. When those come out, it's going to become a lot scarier. Um, do you mind checking how many hot heat units? Bruno says how many groups? Oh, that's good. He actually has some separated zealots and stalkers. Yep. That's a sign of a good player. Indeed. Running over here. Should be a scan. And again, even though he's losing those, those are scans that could have been mules. They could have been. There was so much potential. A scan is even more fleeting than a mule. Yeah. What would you rather be? I'd rather be a mule. I'd rather be called on supplies. <laughs> oh, that's smart. Yeah. I hadn't thought about that. I value life. Uh-oh. Tricks are trying to be a little bit tricky here. Not really living up Go to his name, though. A lot more gateways coming up here. Terran's got to be careful. He's been overstimming a little bit. You know, once the Colossus comes out, you can't keep making um, medevacs. You have to switch into Vikings, which means every medevac you have, you have to protect from feedback and stuff like that. Yeah, you, you got to be careful whenever you engage someone with Blink Stalkers as you run away. Right. You can snipe one or two each time. And that's not a good thing, Tasteless. As you said, uh, you got to get that second star pour, or you have to be super careful with your medevacs. And that's probably the better way to do it, is being super careful. Taren, I think... Struggling, struggling a little bit, excuse me, to try to figure out where do I get out on this map? How do I attack? Mm. Seems like he might just be waiting to max out to go or something. Scanning once again, but I mean, that's that's not necessarily a very good trade. You know, running up there, scanning, stimming a bunch of units, losing them to uh, stalkers on the high ground. Yeah. I'm not sure that I really uh, like the style he's going about here. You know, maybe uh, do a push with turrets so you don't have to use as many scans. The mules will pay for three turrets. One meal pays for three turrets, Stasis. That sounds like a bargain to me. Yeah. And here we go. It looks like it is time. Nice EMP going off. There's a lot of speed zealots in there. They are closing in. The two Colossus. I don't know why I couldn't think of that. Doing a ton of splash damage. Some nice kiting right now, though. And uh, Trickster may want to back up just a little bit here. Nice Guardian Shield there. Protecting the small clump of units that still remain. And, you know, with the two Colossus uh, still there, and that's where Blink comes in handy. With the two Colossus still there, I mean, they can deal so much damage. And even if Protoss somehow uh, manages to not, you know, win with this attack, how on earth is Terran going to expand? That's a big issue. He's whittled down the Terran army to a very tiny number. Yeah, he, he truly has. I mean, I don't know. I, I'm just, I was looking at Battle Tasteless, and I feel like as soon as the Zealots are drying up, Protoss needs to get out of there. He lost a lot of Stalkers, a lot of Sentries. I mean, he's, I think you, it I looks think like he's right. going to win, but no, you know, here's I got to be a little bit crucial. It, um, both Stalkers and um, Colossus, or Colossi, uh, basically, you, you don't ever want to let them actually be hit. Yeah. Like, Zealots are not really damage dealers. I mean, if you have the, if you have the leg upgrade, well, that's nice. That's great and all. But to be frank, you just want them to absorb hits. That is their main function. Yeah. If Zealots had zero damage, I'd still be making a bunch of them to uh, <laughs> take the hits of my army. They could just run up there and give the Terran army hugs. When a concussive shell hits a stalker tasteless, it is like hitting a puppy with a sledgehammer. Oh, that's terrible image, Artosis. Yeah, it is. That image he is has worse. a football you helmet on. Sick but... baby penguin. <laughs> what does that sick baby penguin cough sound like, Artosis? <laughs> I don't remember, but it was bad. <laughs> <laughs> That's so sad. Watching his friend get club, his baby seal friend get club. Yeah. How could you say terrible things like that, Artosis, <laughs> yeah. to our viewers? I don't know. I'm sorry. Um, I don't know if Taryn can win uh, with the Protoss taking the upper right main. You know, one thing that uh, Taryn didn't ever do was start dropping, you know, the uh, expansion at the bottom center. Mm. Start doing stuff to get his opponent out of position. He kind of sat there and turtled with medevacs, marauders, 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 and marines. Well, you know, it all leads back to, as we were saying in the beginning, when he decided to go for the delayed three barracks attack. Right. I was saying, uh, and you were saying as well, if this doesn't do a ton of damage, or at least maim Trickster, he's going to be so far behind. And, I mean, he brought SCVs with him. It didn't really do a lot of damage. He only killed gateway units. You don't care if gateway units die that early on. 
against that. Are you kidding me? He's going to have so much later on. And Trickster just played very well after that. Okay, we got one drop going on over here. But meanwhile, Protoss might be gearing up for the tech. Upper right side of the minimap, a drop. There we go. Taking out that uh, pylon very smartly. Doesn't want DT to be worth in. Here we right. go. Trickster moving forward with those stalkers. High Templar right his army together. Nice EMP on a high Templar there. Still some side storms are left. And oh nice my god. Storm. Oh man, that's so many Colossus. Here's a, he needs to get those Colossus all actually doing damage to the infantry. I don't know, that refinery was pretty important, Tasteless. <laughs> the one with no, maybe you're right, Artosis. Yeah. <laughs> the one with no... Uh, nope. Well, that was a very here. sloppy attack there, but it might uh, not actually matter because of the sheer number of uh, Protoss units uh, that are still left over. And Tricks are going to turn around into losing this battle pretty quickly, but... Uh, He'll have more. Still, it's 56 Mark by to 107. Words. Yeah, the income right now is three times as much or four times as much for Trickster. Um, yeah. You know, this is a pretty effective drop here, but uh, it's just not enough. He's, he's great warping in this drop. Yeah, absolutely. And Trickster is just kind of making units waiting right now for Keen to leave. Keen is barely mining. This looks very much like a standard Terran versus Protoss in StarCraft 1, where the Protoss is basically taking the whole map. The Terran has been unable to push out on the map. Maybe because he went two factory if it's in StarCraft 1. And by the end of the game, the Terran just never was able to muster enough of an army. Yeah, absolutely. GG. So Trickster takes that first game, that crucial first game on Provos. He might be a Super Saiyan, or maybe he just colored his hair. I don't know. I'm probably going to go with the first. That makes a lot more sense. It's it does. a lot more reasonable. And he's uh, he's not just like a ah, Super Saiyan. He's been in the Hyper All Time Chamber, man. Yeah. His hair is always blonde. Yeah. He has learned how to just keep it there at that level. That's his new power level right there. He keeps it right at that power level. We can merge up like that, right? Well, absolutely. This we get we red do. hair, Tasis. We're at level fours. Yeah. All right, we get a monkey tail when we merge. It's true. Archon with a tail. Rare sight to see. It is. Uh, so I don't really feel like opening up with the three barracks was the best way to handle your first match. Uh, in the up and down. It, do you know what I mean? Yeah, no. He, it's like I've come this far. He needed to do more than that. I'm a good player. Why would you base that up? Of, uh, well, it's essentially a strategy where you're saying, I hope my opponent doesn't prepare for three barracks. I don't think that's the best way to approach this mm. in a match that's this pivotal um, to your esports career. So we're going to have to see something a little bit better here. Uh, and I don't know what that's going to be in this case. The map is Zelnaga Caverns, and the game has already started, so let's do this.